there were some commenters who watched my two Jesse Williams videos last week who said that I have a dislike for biracial people and a bias against biracial people. Anyone who knows my background knows that's not the case at all. In 2015, I wrote and published a novel called Spinsterella. And in the Spinsterella novel, the heroine, Matilda Crowley, is a biracial woman who has a black mother and a white father. And this year, I'm working on a prequel to the Spinsterella novel called Spellbound, which details the Matilda Crowley character's teen years and her struggles as a biracial teenager growing up in 1980s New York City. And the Matilda Crowley character is inspired by two biracial actresses, Tia Maori and Persia White, both who have white fathers and black mothers. And those two women inspired the Matilda Crowley character. And the Matilda Crowley character really came from the roots of something that Persia White said back in 2009 on a radio show where she said, I'm so dark because I'm so light-skinned. And I related to that because as a light-skinned man, I understood what the dark side of light skin was. And that was one of the reasons why I went about making this Matilda Crowley character an African-American goth, because I understood that there was a whole dark side to light skin that many people who aren't light skinned don't understand and, you know, cannot even fathom to relate. Even some white people cannot relate to the dark side of what light skinned was. And that was one of the main, you know, influences of the, uh, for that character. So, if I have a dislike for biracial people, why would I write two entire novels regarding the subject and go in-depth detailing what those issues are? Um, it doesn't seem like a guy who is a bias against biracial people would go to those lengths and spend you know, two, three years of his life writing two novels, doing years of research on said novels, um, talking about that dark side of white skin, in addition to the goth subculture, and detailing what those issues, you know, entail. That's not what a bigoted person would do. And before I even wrote Smisterella or Spellbound, um, I got inspiration from another biracial actress, Sally Richardson Whitfield. Now, Sally Richardson Whitfield is also a woman who has a black mother and a white. And the and actress Sally Richardson Whitfield inspired me to create a character called Easting, who is featured prominently in novels like that I write, such as The Temptation of John Haynes and the Easting series. And what inspired me from actress Sally Richardson was not her race, but the way she spoke. And she spoke in such an articulate and intelligent way. She was acting in gargoyles that it inspired me to create this Eastian character because I always wanted to write, you know, a character, um, a villain, because I always thought that she would play a good villain role. So that's one of the reasons why I created that character. Um, and over the years, the character has evolved. And her main influence was actress Sally Richardson, who is a biracial woman. So again, if I have a bias against, a bi against biracial people, why is it that I, again, took the time way back in the 1990s to create a character based on a, a, another biracial actress? So all those claims that people are making about me having a bias against Jesse Williams for being biracial, they have no grounds and no merit whatsoever. Again, my issue with Mr. Williams had to do with, his, with, with the platform he was on and the narrative he was promoting. Because when I look at that platform and I look at the narrative, that's what I have an issue with. Um, because that narrative that's being promoted fits an agenda that fits the narrative of white liberals. Because when we look at your white liberals, um, they always pick, as I call it, a light-skinned pretty boy to push their agenda. It's no different than, your, as I said before, with your Barack Obama and your Halle Berry. And if we look at their makeup as biracials, we look at um, where they come from. You have 
the black father and the white mother. And that really makes a statement about, you know, the direction of the narrative. Because, again, who is the, te who is the teacher of culture? The mother. And if you look at the women who inspired my characters, who were their teachers of culture? They were black women. Who were the teachers of culture of your Halle Berry, your Jesse Williams, and your Barack Obama? Those were white women. So they are coming from a white perspective, which means they will follow a white liberal narrative. This is why I, again, have an issue with people like your Jesse Williams, your Halle Berry, and your Barack Obama, because they pretty much follow lockstep the narrative of your white liberals. They follow the agenda of your white liberals. They will say pro-black things to stimulate the masses and get them emotional, but really, they're, they're really just following the line of the white liberals' slave masters who pretty much, you know, pay their checks and follow them. This is why I said I had an issue, you know, with this guy working for Lee Daniels and Chandra Rhimes, because I look at the biracial actresses who had um, black mothers and white fathers, I see them going in a completely different direction. I don't see them going in the same direction as your Halle Berry's, your Barack Obama's, and your Jesse Williams. So when I look at that, again, I look at the narrative. And I also look at the historical context, because if we look at who were deemed the leaders in the black community um, ever since the establishment of the black community back in the um, late 1880s, 1890s, they were always picking biracial people. I mean, even your NAACP, your Walter White, he was pretty, he was a biracial. Um, many of your other black leaders, like your Adam Clayton Powell, he was biracial. So these biracials pretty much have been um, leading your black community for many years. It's very, you know, and many black people have pretty much accepted this. And I can go back to your Ferris State um, website where they have a document which I used in the research for Spinsterella and Spellbaum called The Tragic Mulatto. This entire article, um, brilliant article, pretty much details and chronicles this. And it talks about how biracial people were pretty much pushed to the forefront by white people to be the leaders and spokesmen for the black community and black people themselves made biracial people to be their spokesmen and leaders in their black community. And this is this is something that's gone on for a long time, but a lot of black people want to come to you when you try to point out things about people about um, you know, people like your Jesse Williams, and they come to you and tell you you're um, a coon, you're a sellout, you're an Uncle Tom, you hate yourself, you have, and you have dislike against biracial people when this is not the case at all. If I had a dislike of biracial people, again, why would I write two entire novels on the subject featuring a biracial heroine? Why would I write a story talking about the struggles of being biracial? Why would I write a story about the struggles of the dark side of light skin? Um, it, that's not what someone who hates biracial people would do. And... Many biracial people over the years have come to my blog, they have read my blog on www.seansjames.blogspot.com, they've watched my videos, and they haven't had a problem with me. They understand that, you know, if I hated biracial people, you know, I would be going on rants talking about, you know, how bad mixed people are. And I don't see mixed people as bad. I see mixed people as people. Um... And I see that there are people like everybody else. Um, and I have myself have had to deal with this whole light skin, dark skin issue, not only in my personal life, but in, in dealing with my publications. Because these same people who say that I hate Jesse Williams are the same people who would look at one of the covers for one of my ISIS series books, like Your Night of the Vampires or Wrath of the Cyber Goddess of Bride of Dracula, and then tell me that the images on that same book are too light skin. This this is this makes absolutely no sense. You have an issue with me calling out 
a biracial man, but when I put a black woman on the cover with golden skin, you tell me that it's too light skin. Even though I've pointed out in numerous videos and numerous blogs that I went from my research on Egyptian mythology to give Isis her skin tone, that her skin tone is based on what was presented in those Egyptian myths which said that gods had skin made of gold. And this goes over black folks' heads when I present it to them. They then tell me that I'm color struck and I'm sitting there saying, I have research to prove my points. I have facts to prove my points. I don't write a single thing without proving a single point. And I don't make a video or write a blog without having facts to back up my information. I feel that if I'm going to come out here and present media to you, it is going to be accurate and factual to a point. Now, I did, again, make mistakes in the early video when I talked about this Jesse Williams. But as I came back, I came back and corrected things. But, you know, when you deal with black people, they they are like this. They, they, they like to be told what they want to hear. And when you try to tell them what they need to know, they get upset. They get emotional. They get confrontational. Because... They have a hard time processing information. They only want to hear, you know, good things. They remind me, you know, so much of the children of Israel when Jeremiah was trying to tell them, you know, what was going to happen. They didn't want to hear from Jeremiah. They wanted to hear what they wanted to hear. And because they wanted to hear what they wanted to hear, they suffered the consequences. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.